So we'd like to shift gears from the number one university in the world to the programs that produce the students that ultimately uh, go into these universities and go down to the high school level. So after we started working with LEGO and LEGO Education, you know, we built the software that powers LEGO Mindstorms and LEGO WeDo, we decided that we could make a version of LabVIEW that would work for high schools. We got a lot of feedback that, that we should have LabVIEW uh, in the high schools. And uh, after a number of years of working with a number of vendors and, and professors and teachers, uh, earlier this spring, uh, we came out with uh, LabVIEW for Education and LabVIEW for LEGO Mindstorms. And it's just out now and starting to get into uh, high schools uh, around the world. Now, we, we got some validation this week that we think uh, we're on to something. Uh, as many of you know, there's a certification program that goes on here at NI Week where you can take our certification exams. And I'm, I'm proud to say that uh, yesterday I got word that uh, we have a new certified LabVIEW associate developer uh, please congratulate, he's sitting here on the front row, 14-year-old Cody Brooks. Congratulations, Cody. He's uh, got a good role model. His dad, Steve, is a certified LabVIEW architect and is very active in FIRST Robotics and uh, FIRST Tech Challenge. Uh, okay, so to give you a little idea of what's going on in the high school, let's uh, take a look at this uh, video from John Sperry. My name is John Sperry. I've been teaching for 10 years, started teaching math and science, and now I'm an engineering teacher. One of the biggest challenges for teaching physics, math, uh, everything within STEM, is to make content more relevant, more meaningful to students, and inspire them to want to apply it in their own lives. The reason I use LabVIEW is it gives me the freedom to use traditional probes that I've used in the past and use traditional labs, but also gives me the freedom to be creative and my students to be creative. LabVIEW offers a very structured environment that's a very easy for students to pick up, but also has a, a really high ceiling so students can, can reach their full potential. They need to know the why and how that's going to apply to them in the real world. And I think using real world technology is important for that. I'm surprised how many students tell me, oh, my dad uses LabVIEW. And they're surprised at how easy it actually is. Once students begin to understand LabVIEW, they take full ownership of the labs and, and they stop becoming my labs and they come in with these creative ideas about what they can do. I think it's neat when a student can, after just a couple weeks you know, with this technology, do the same thing that professional programmers do. If a teacher asked me for advice on how to inspire their students, I would say ask your students what they want to do and give them the tools to go and do it. So here to set up a student application in John Sperry's class is uh, the team doctor for the Austin Toros and local Austin physician, Dr. Larry Kravitz. Good morning. Good morning. What's been great about this ongoing project that we have is that it's given real world challenges to high school students. If you'll allow me, we'll bring some of that real world relevance into the audience here today. How many people here are runners? Raise your hands. Fair number. Okay, let's ask another question. How many of you are over 40 years old? Ooh, got a lot on that one. Well, if you raised your hand in both of those questions, I should have my card up here, because you'll probably need it, because over the next decade, <laughs> you're, you may be one of the people who has knee problems. As a physician at Austin Regional Clinic, I see knee problems every day. But it wasn't until I fractured my own foot that I had a eureka moment. I was hobbling around in one of those black boots that I'm sure you've seen or worn yourself. And as I felt my leg in that boot, I realized that the strapping was acting like a sling and completely taking the weight off my foot. So as it hung there, there was no pressure and my fracture could heal easily and I could still ambulate around. I thought to myself, surely we can do the same kind of bracing for the knee for problems that we see there. I talked to my orthopedic colleagues, 
and the only thing available was something called an offloading brace. Now this brace technology, rather than taking weight off, merely tilts the leg and pushes the weight of the body from the inside of the leg, where most of the damage is occurring in life, over to the outside of the leg, where hopefully the cartilage is healthier. However, there was nothing out there that could possibly take all the weight, or at least a good portion of the weight of the body, off the knee as it was injured. We were looking for something that was an exoskeleton, if you will, something that fit around the outside and took off the pressure. In seeing this, I thought we had a potential, inve potential invention that was worth development and marketing. It could help aging runners. It could help acutely injured athletes who were trying to rehab their injuries. And it could help the vast millions of people who have osteoarthritis and are looking at a total knee replacement in their future. The problem was, I don't have the tools, I don't have the prototyping skills, I don't have the testing ability to carry that forward. I'm a practicing physician with a big clinical practice. So for three years, this idea languished. Well, while I was languishing, my son Isaac was growing up. He entered Austin Anderson High School and became enamored with their robotics program, and very excited to be part of it. As I was taking part in being the parent support group and watching the kids, I saw that what many of you who might have a chance to mentor these high school kids might see. They had CAD skills and could design and bring to life my ideas. They had fabrication tools in their shops that could build the brace that I needed. And they had test equipment that could take that brace and find out and prove whether it would do what I was hoping it would do. One night, Mr. John Sperry, the teacher you saw in that video, was talking about looking for ways to find funding for projects that the robotics team could do. I thought it was a good time to pitch my idea. And I found that John, with his open mind about looking for new ways to uh, stimulate education in kids, was even more enthusiastic about the program than I was myself. With this coalition, we decided to go out and try to find some funding. I really didn't have to look far. My own company, Austin Regional Clinics, really knew nothing about research and medical devices. Like many companies out there, they're very excited about community projects and youth education programs. To my pleasant surprise, they rapidly agreed to give us a $2,000 seed grant to start this program. To tell you more about how this program runs, I'd like to bring out Mr. John Sperry, engineering teacher for Anderson High School. I'd like to introduce you to uh, my two students, Rita and Evan, who are gonna walk you through this exciting project uh, with the help of our beloved mannequin, uh, Rodney, who uh, was running a little late this morning. Uh, fortunately, the uh, important half is here. The torso, however, is downstairs, still in the badge line. Rita? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sperry. Um, believe it or not, I initially found out about this project during a fire drill at school. Um, as I was waiting outside to re-enter the building, Mr. Sperry found me and told me about the project. And I was really excited to join the team and uh, spend my summer working with industry professionals like Larry Kravitz um, on such a meaningful project. Last year as a freshman, I took Mr. Sperry's robotics class, uh, during which I became familiar with LabVIEW and MIDAC. Uh, Mr. Sperry approached me with the proposition to take part in the project, and I was eager to prove my engineering skills. But uh, before we got started, we actually had to learn about human anatomy, knee pathophysiology, and the myriad of treatment options for knee osteoarthritis. So to combat the painful effects of osteoarthritis, 
our brace needed to be able to provide uh, such a force that the, it can actually separate the bones in the knee. Um, this is called a distraction force. And our initial brace design included uh, metal hinges and springs to provide the uh, force, but that didn't work out for us. So we started working on this design you see here, which uses uh, fiberglass and polymer rods to uh, provide that distraction force. Now, of course, you, you then had to build some kind of a test system, right, to validate the prototype that you designed? Yes. In the beginning, we used our own knees to test the brace. <laughs> which uh, probably wasn't a good idea, but we did it anyway. Um, <laughs> so we decided to uh, make it a little more controlled and we built our automated uh, testing system. So one of our first tests used MIDAC to create a simple force tester. As you can see from the picture of the design, it was capable of bending a single rod in place through 90 degrees uh, and still logging all of the forces. However, we wanted to build a more advanced system capable of uh, bending both rods in place and uh, getting more detailed measurements so we could better evaluate the materials so we can make better rod choices. So uh, here it is, here's the latest system. We uh, built it in part from last year's uh, first robotics competition kit. So yeah, and uh, <laughs> we can run it uh, and you will be able to see the forces exerted by the rods. As you can see, each rod is giving off roughly eight to 12 pounds of force, which we hope will be enough to provide a distraction force and alleviate the pain on the cartilage. So as you can see, um, the simulator is very important uh, for us to uh, gather um, significant data to give us a better idea of how to build our brace. So what's next? Well, unfortunately, we don't have the resources yet to uh, build this into a large-scale project, but we are definitely looking for some corporate sponsors and partners. <laughs> now, now, as I understand it, uh, you've also applied for a patent. Is that, is that right? Yes. Wow. That is right. That's uh, uh, fantastic. Another more reason that you might want to fund this thing. <laughs> Now, uh, as I understand it, uh, this has had uh, some influence on your choice of what you do after you graduated. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I graduated this year from Anderson High School, and I'm proud to say that um, in just two weeks, I'll start studying uh, mechanical engineering at the very great University of Texas. Look at the horns! <laughs> All right, Dr. Kravitz, uh, are, you, are you satisfied with your engineering team? Oh, more than satisfied. I think about how I was during my years of high school, and these kids far exceed, exceed what I can do. I'm sure that in the near future, uh, they'll be the ones standing at this podium where I am. Great. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Dr. Kravitz. Well, there were some light bulbs. Uh, so um, we do have another uh, homework assignment for you. Um, get your smartphones out. It's the theme today. Uh, bookmark this, and you can then go and find teams just like this. And you can help them, mentor them, or perhaps, like Dr. Kravitz, you could put them to work and solve your engineering problems. At a minimum, you'll meet kids that you're going to want to hire uh, in just a few years. <laughs>